Hello everyone! Today I'm going to be doing a RuffleCon 2017 haul. So if you don't know, RuffleCon is an alternative fashion convention that's held in Connecticut. This is the fourth year, and it has a heavy focus on Lolita fashion. I do most of my Lolita shopping for the year at RuffleCon, and that's because you save money by not paying for shipping, you can try things on before buying them, and you can really get an accurate view of the colors of things and the cut. So that way you can find out if something will actually look good on you before you buy it. So with that being said, let's go into the haul. We're going to start with the smaller items first and then work our way up to the bigger main pieces. So the first two things that I'm going to show actually aren't for me. These are for my Secret Santa. My giftie really likes Fairy K and Minhara fashion. And so I decided to take advantage of some of the vendors that we had in the marketplace this year. The first thing that I bought for her is this pair of little pink star earrings. They're quite big, I'm not going to put them in, but you can see they're quite big and um, definitely make a statement. They are plastic and semi-transparent, you can sort of tell, um, but they're very cute. And these are from a store called Dreamy with two eyes. The seller also included a little unicorn sticker which I'm keeping for myself. Um, she also had t-shirts and sweatshirts with this print on them, and I thought they were really, really cute. The second and final item that I bought for my giftie at RuffleCon is a pin from the brand Pruvitel. It's an enamel pin that has a pill on it with the symbol for prescription and a heart on the bottom of the pill, some wings, a halo, and this little charm, which is iridescent and has a cross on it. I've seen the pins from this collection and the other jewelry from this collection being worn fairly often in Menhara recently, and so I thought it was a good gift for my giftie. Um, she also said she was just getting into Menhara, so I thought it was likely that she wouldn't have this item already. The pin is very good quality, and one thing I really like is that it actually is a double pin, so it has two different spots where you pin it to your clothing, so it won't, won't dangle or pull down your clothing like some heavy lapel pins do. Also, I just want to give a big shout out to the owner of this shop who helped me pick out this pin because I explained to her that I wasn't sure what to buy for my giftie because I'm not personally into Menhara, but I knew that Poovy had a lot of Menhara pieces. So she helped me pick out the colorway for this pin. The next item I bought is a headdress from a brand called Twilight Fashions. Um, it's a white headdress with a thicker lace on one side and a smaller lace on the other. It has roses and bows on each side plus some pearl chain and a little key charm that's the same on both sides. The ties for this headdress are made of velvet ribbon and they have a little clunny lace accent as well. The reason that I bought this headdress is because for a few years now I had been thinking about buying a bonnet. Um, even when bonnets first started becoming really popular in Lolita, I never bought them because I have sort of a round face and very large babyish cheeks, and I was worried that if I wore a bonnet, it would look a little bit too infantile, and I didn't want that look for myself personally. Um, so I had been looking for a bonnet at RuffleCon, but I came across this headdress, which looks a little bit like a half bonnet because of the thicker long lace in the front, and I asked if I could try it on and the owner said I could and once I put it on I realized I think it looks actually quite nice even though I do have large cheeks I think this looks quite nice obviously not with this outfit but with the right coordinate I think this could suit me very well another thing I really like about this piece is that the lining of it or the bottom of it is made out of velvet ribbon so it doesn't slip off of your hair as easily as certain headbands or headdresses do when they're made of satin, they just slide right off of your hair. But since this is velvet, it has a little bit of tooth to it. And it also has two of these little clips that are sometimes used um, in wigs to help adhere it to your hair. The last accessory I bought actually has a bit of a story to it. Um, I'll show it first and then explain the story. So this is the accessory. It's in the box currently, um, but I will take it out to show you close-ups, of course. So this is a Kanzashi pin from the brand Orishian, who were special guests this year at RuffleCon. Orishian is a Japanese brand that specializes in Kanzashi, which are traditional Japanese headpieces or headdresses that are handmade very delicately. Every single flower on them is handmade and hand-created. 
um, and they are very, very delicate and very intricate, and so they are quite expensive. So as you can see, this kanzashi in particular has peach, some light pink, and a mauve rose. All of these, again, are handmade petal by petal out of ribbon. It also has a gold and white striped bow and a pearl chain with little dangles on the end and then a few crystals on the big rose in the center. One thing I also really like about this is if you flip it over, you can see the very intricate and very delicate way that these are constructed. So each flower is glued onto this little, um, a little black circle, and then they are put with wire into this clip. And as you can see, it's very intricate and very delicate. Another thing to note is that because kanzashi are sort of an ancient art, they do take a lot of time to make, and you are not supposed to get them wet. They actually included a little note that tells you you aren't supposed to get them wet um, because the flower petals can distort if you do, or they can come off of these backings because I don't know if this kanzashi in particular is made this way, but I know traditional kanzashi are made with rice glue, which will dissolve in water. So this piece is actually the second most expensive thing that I purchased at Rufflecon, even though I bought four dresses, this was more expensive than three of the dresses. This kanzashi I paid $65 for, but as you can see on the back, the price was originally 8,000 yen, so about $80. All of the um, kanzashi with sparkles on them, rhinestones on them, were marked down to $65. So the story behind this piece starts by saying that Orishian has two designers. There's a woman, who speaks English fairly well, and then her partner or husband, who speaks Japanese almost exclusively, does not speak very much English. So when I went to the booth, it turns out that the owner, the woman, was actually running a panel about how these are made. Um, I didn't know that at the time, otherwise I might have waited to go to the booth to buy something. But when I went, it was just the husband there, and so I was browsing. So as I was browsing, the husband or partner was trying to speak to me in English, but it was very clear that he was struggling and wasn't able to really convey what he wanted to say, just because of his limited English. And so after a few minutes, I said to him, Nihongo de o okay des, as in, you can speak Japanese to me. And when I said that, he exploded with words. So he immediately told me, you know, these are all handmade, all the flowers are handmade, um, you can wear it in your hair as a hair clip, which is how they are, you know, intended to be worn, or you can wear it on your blouse, or you can clip it to your bag because it has a big, thick clip here, and he pointed out that it matched the jumper skirt that I was wearing, which it did, the peach roses matched the roses on the print of my jumper skirt, and I told him, oh, thank you, I, I made this dress myself, it's handmade, and then he exploded with compliments again and said, it's so pretty, you did such a good job, he kept calling me Ojo-sama, which is like, young lady. And it was sort of at that point that I decided, I'm going to buy this piece. It's really pretty, he's, he's very kind and very sweet. Um, so even though I wasn't originally intending on buying one of their bigger pieces, I was intending on buying one of their smaller pieces, um, I decided that I should buy this to support this small brand. My friends and I now have a joke that I didn't pay $65 for a hair clip, I paid $65 for a Japanese man to be nice to me and I got a free hair clip. <laughs> We also had a little bit of a bowing fest when he handed me my purchase. Um, so he packaged it very nicely in this box, which I'm still storing it in just to keep it safe because like I said, it can't get wet and they're very delicate. Um, so I'm keeping it in this box and he put this cute little sticker on it and a ribbon and it says best wishes. And when he handed it to me, he bowed and he said, arigato gozaimasu. And I also bowed and said, arigato gozaimasu. And then we continued doing that for a few minutes every time we would be bowing deeper until finally he said Owari des, as in like the transaction is over and I'm done. <laughs> and I just thought it was a really funny experience and I'll probably remember that for a long time. So now we're going to move on to the bigger items starting with two pairs of shoes that I purchased from a local comm member. So first are these gold flat shoes that are almost like tea party shoes but they have a double cross strap and a large bow on the front. They are a little bit scuffed, but I'm confident that I can get the scuffs out. One thing that I found really interesting is the way that these shoes close. I'm used to Lolita shoes having a snap on them, but these ones don't. They just have a little hook on the front right here where you slide in the strap and the placement of the buckle is what holds the strap together. 
It actually took me a few minutes to figure out how these were meant to close because I've never seen anything like this before. The second pair of shoes is this ivory pair of, again, flat shoes that have several double cross straps on the front and detachable bow clips. I am fairly certain that these are replica shoes from Baby the Star Shine Bright, and I say that because the girl that I bought them from said that they were from Taobao. They do have the baby logo in them. There is a pair of baby shoes that match this design, but because she said she bought them from Taobao, that would obviously make them replicas. I'm personally not against replica shoes, um, because you can't trademark shoe designs, and also they aren't print designs, but I really, really dislike when replica makers copy the brand's logo because that really makes it confusing to tell if the shoe is from the brand or not. Um, I personally have never owned brand shoes, so I am not sure what the quality would be like. So that's not really an indicator for me to tell if these are replicas or not. For now, I'm acting under the assumption that they are replicas, but really there's no way for me to know because I'm not the one who purchased them originally and because they decided to copy the brand's logo. So now we're getting into the actual clothing items, and I'm going to start with the least exciting items and work my way up to the most exciting items. So the first item we have here is an old school Baby the Starshine Bright cutso in black. So like most cutsos, it's made of that nice, comfortable um, sort of jersey material, jersey knit. And this particular design has a yoke with some very thick um, old school cotton lace and pin tucks on, along the yoke and then white heart-shaped buttons. It also has a slight ruffle along the sleeve and a ruffle at the hem. Um, along the collar it also has an embroidered Baby the Starshine Bright logo as well as a little crystal at the top of the bee. This is the sort of thing that I wanted to wear when I first got into Lolita because I think this was released around the time that I first got into Lolita and so this style sort of holds a warm spot in my heart. So this is definitely a more casual item suited to everyday wear but I think it's very comfortable and still a little bit stylish. The second item that I'm going to show you is this Innocent World light sweater cut sew. Um, it's sort of an ivory color. I wish you could feel the knit. It's so soft. It is a little bit sheer, but very, very comfortable. Um, it has slight puffed sleeves with ruffles along the sleeve, but the main attraction of this piece is the collar. So it has a lace collar with little lace flowers and pearls. So although this piece isn't typically what I would wear with Lolita, I think it is something that I can wear casually every day. And it's so comfortable and so soft. So next up, I have two Baby the Starshine Bright Boleros. They're actually quite boring staple pieces, but I realized that I didn't have any black or white brand Boleros, so once I found two of them in the consignment room, I decided that I should go for them, because I used to have a lot more off-brand in Taobao, but I, in recent years, I've been switching over to having more and more brand, and I decided that I wanted to go for some staple pieces. So this is a black, lightweight Bolero. Um, it actually has little cherries in the knit, but I don't know if I can even show it to you because of how faint they are. I don't think you can tell, but they do have tiny, tiny cherries in the knit. Um, and then it has, again, that thick cotton lace that is pretty popular for older pieces. And then the ribbon tie is a matte gross green ribbon. The other bolero that I got is also from Baby. It's white. It's a bit of a thicker jersey knit as opposed to the open knit of the black bolero. As you can see, it has that thick old school lace. So it has this double-sided matte ribbon, which is pretty common for baby pieces, but I rarely see um, this type of ribbon on American garments or even in American stores, even though I've looked. So I've looked into importing some of this ribbon for my own handmade pieces because I think it's really nice. So now we are finally moving on to the main pieces. I actually purchased four different jumper skirts in the consignment room. So first up is another old school baby piece. It is a plaid jumper skirt with the elastic sleeves, which are almost like a mini sleeve jumper skirt, but you can also wear them scrunched together for just a regular jumper skirt look. It's fully shirred, and it has these old school cross straps in the front, three bows in the, in the bodice, and it's quite a long jumper skirt. It does have a small row of ruffles at the end. The fabric is definitely a little bit worn, but it doesn't have any pilling in it at all, just a slight feeling of wear. It's definitely, again, a more casual piece. I actually wore this yesterday for Thanksgiving dinner, and it was super comfortable because of the full shirring, and I thought 
but it would just be nice to wear casually, especially since we're heading into the fall winter season. Next up is actually another plaid jumper skirt, but this time it's from Angelic Pretty. And this is a red and pink plaid jumper skirt that has a halter top with detachable straps as well. It has these big red buttons along the front as well as this sort of row of ruffles, sort of like a yoke but not quite. This skirt then has two rows of ruffles topped by a bit of rickrack. One thing I really, really love about this piece, which I hope the camera picks up, is that the red in the plaid actually, parts of it have a little bit of glittery thread, so it's reflective, and I think that's really, really festive, really nice for the fall winter season. Again, very comfortable, very soft, and I really, really love this piece. This is a piece that I think most people would consider to be their most favorite purchase or their major purchase. For me, it's actually my second favorite, and this is the Angelic Pretty Loyalty Set in navy. So it has this sort of regimental stripe design, which I really love. I really love academic themes. And it actually has sort of an asymmetrical skirt. I'm not sure if you can tell, but this side of the skirt um, is actually a little bit shorter than the other side. Hopefully that picks up. But again, the top is sort of not quite a halter, but it has the same little lapel that the plaid jumper skirt does. And then in the back, the straps are crossed. Um, it does have adjustable buttons, which is really nice because there are definitely times where I feel the need to fix the buttons. This actually came as a set with the modesty panel, which is this row of lace. This part actually comes off. And then this pin, which also comes off, but I think really, really complements um, just the design. So I personally am probably only going to wear it with this on, although it is removable. And then it also came with the head bow which is fully wired. I actually have never owned a matching head bow because it's just really not the way that I like to coordinate things. Um, the head bow did have slight damage. I think you can probably tell. I mostly fixed it, but the wire peeks out just a little bit out of that edge. Um, I was able to tuck it in almost completely, but it can't quite get that last little loop in, but it's not super noticeable. This is definitely a purchase that I think will get a lot of wear, again, because regimental stripes do suit the fall winter season very well. So the final piece that I actually purchased, and by far my favorite piece, is this jumper skirt, which actually is a little bit damaged, I'll explain that in a moment, but it is this jumper skirt, which is from the Taobao brand Cat's Broom, and this is their secret garden print. And so I actually wanted this dress when it was on pre-order back in spring of 2016, and I didn't end up ordering it, um, and I sort of missed out on the pre-order. And so I came across this in the consignment room, brand new with tags. It did have some minor damage, which I'll explain again in a second. And I was sort of on the fence about it just because I, again, am really trying to buy more brand pieces and not so much off-brand or Taobao, but I think honestly this piece has changed my mind just because it is such a gorgeous print. So as I said, it's called The Secret Garden. Um, if you know me, you know I really love Frances Hudson Burnett, who is the author of the book The Secret Garden. Um, although The Secret Garden isn't my personal favorite book of hers, it is still a book that I really, really love. So the print features a picket fence with roses, and then up along the dress there's also keys and, let me see, pocket watches and little paper cranes. And it's just really gorgeous. I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but the whole fabric itself is a little bit shimmery. One thing I also really love about this design is that it has this little asymmetrical hem in the front where it has this bow, and it reveals a tiny, tiny bustle of lace, which I think is so sweet and dainty. Another thing is that both the bow on the skirt and the bow on the bodice feature the same um, small dangle pearls small dangled crystals. One of the damages of this dress is actually that it is missing one. So as you can see, there's a crystal here and there's just a hanging bit of thread there. So I think I might end up having to replace all four crystals because I don't think I'll be able to find an exact match for this one. But that's okay. That's a very minor bit of damage that can be pretty easily fixed. Another thing I really love about this design are these two sets of crisscrossing lace in the front. I feel like that's something a lot of older school pieces had, and I don't see it as much now. 
I was a little bit concerned about whether or not it would suit my bust because I do have a bit of a larger bust for Lolita, but after I tried it on at the encouragement of one of my friends, we both decided that this actually really suits me and the theme is perfect for me and I think it's something that I really love. The other small bit of damage that this has is because the straps are adjustable, they have um, a button on the inside like most adjustable straps do, and one of the buttons is actually missing. You can see the thread where it came off, but that's fine because it's just a clear button. It's not visible when worn, so I'm going to replace it and I'm not too concerned about that damage. Another thing I'm not sure about is that the lacing in the back didn't have a ribbon, even though it clearly has loops for ribbon. I don't know if maybe that was a manufacturing thing, if they just didn't include ribbons, but I can easily replace it, although I do think it would have been nice if it included the same ribbon that's used for the cross straps in the front, just for continuity, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to find this exact ribbon, because it isn't just a plain ribbon, it has little ruffles along the edge, so it's, it's definitely sort of a unique ribbon that I'm not sure if I'll be able to get an exact match for, but regardless, it is beautiful and I am extremely happy with this piece and I can't wait to wear it. I think it's just gorgeous. I'm not sure if I'll wear it um, anytime soon because it is definitely more of a spring-summer piece. The whole fabric is a very light chiffon and of course the white with the pink is a little bit more of a spring-summer garment, but I might end up wearing it actually to International Lolita Day next weekend because it is just so beautiful and I am so excited to wear it. So hilariously enough, right after I finished filming that section with the jumper skirts, I actually found the missing button that was on my cat's broom, um, or that fell off of my cat's broom jumper skirt. So now I don't have to go looking for a replacement button. Um, although again, it doesn't matter because it's just a clear two-hole button. Very common, nothing special, but it is nice that I found it and I don't have to go out and buy new buttons. Alright, so that wraps it up for my RussellCon 2017 haul. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have any questions about the things that I bought, please let me know. I am planning on becoming a lot more active on YouTube in the near future, so hopefully I can continue this, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. So again, feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed it, feel free to like the video if you liked it, and until then, I'll see you next time. Goodbye!